This morning we consider these lessons for our celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. Our first reading from Exodus chapter 15. Easter wasn't God's first victory and it won't be his last. Our Old Testament reading reminds us how God also won a great victory back in Egypt. God's people of every age find reasons to praise him. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them, I will divide the spoils, I will gorge myself on them, I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with the breath, with your breath, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Our second lesson today from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you are looking for solid evidence, where do you turn? To eyewitness accounts. And here in this lesson, the Apostle Paul enumerates the many different times where Jesus had showed himself to be alive. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and in which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. For if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that on the third day, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Our lesson today from Luke chapter 24, here we find Jesus can't be found. The reason? He is alive. Listen to the angel's message. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. 
Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll consider this lesson from Luke chapter 24. I will read just a small section of it. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, have you seen this yet? I have a picture. They say it's a naturally occurring phenomenon. They've been researching this for some time. When people actually come into contact with this, they are amazed and confused at the same time. And, and maybe part of it is because in the middle, it's dark. But the amazing thing about it, really, to me, is that when things get close, it continually keeps drawing things into it. And at the same time, it remains empty. You saw this, right? <laughs> Wait, that's not the right slide. Hold on. There, there it is. The black hole, everybody's been talking about the black hole the last few weeks, right? I think they pronounce it Messier 87, M87. And they were able to actually get pictures of this for the very first time. They say it's 55 million light years away. Its mass is 6.5 billion times the mass of the sun. And everything that comes near it, it just sucks it in. And it never escapes. How did they do it? They had eight ground-based telescopes all around the world. They synchronized them, and then at just the right point, they took these photos and pulled them all together to get the very first picture of a black hole. It was a worldwide effort to look into a hole to see if it was empty. But I'd suggest to you this morning is that there's another worldwide effort going on right now, today. People all over the world are wanting to look into a hole today to see if it is empty. Because the hope is, is that if it is empty, then they'll realize that it's full. Let me explain. On the first Easter, the Bible says this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. The tomb, of course, that we're talking about is the tomb of Jesus. And when we think about tomb, we shouldn't think about cemetery like we think of. We should think maybe more like this picture describes. More like a cave with a hole in it a dark hole and then a stone that could get pushed in front of it to, to close it up. Uh, we know what had just happened. 
Jesus had just died. He had just been crucified. He had been arrested. He was sentenced to death. He was put to death. A lot of people were disappointed because they, they thought that maybe Jesus was the Savior. Maybe Jesus was the one who was going to redeem his people. But now he was gone. But these women, these women, they were drawn to that black hole. And so they got up early and they went to look for Jesus. The thing was is, when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They went into the black hole and they discovered that it was empty. And they were amazed and confused at the same time. So what did they do? Well, the Bible tells us that they went and told the disciples. And when they told them, they said, that sounds like a bunch of nonsense. But two of the disciples, Peter and John, also went to look into the black hole. And when they did, it says, for Peter bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, meaning the garment that Jesus had been wrapped in when he died, they found that. They didn't find Jesus. They just found a black hole that was empty. Both of them were coming up empty. There are times in your life when you feel like we're just coming up empty. There's a lot of people in the world searching for different things. What are you searching for? Are you searching for peace? Are you searching for the time in life when you can finally feel content? When you can finally stop feeling anxious and worried about all the things that are happening, about all the things that aren't under your control? Are you just searching for a time of peace finally in your life for once? And how are you doing with that? Coming up empty? Some people in life are searching for power. And I don't mean just power that comes with money or power that comes with a certain position. But power over our greatest weakness, which is death. Where eventually everyone will succumb. Wouldn't it be great to have power over death? Through the ages, people have been searching for that, but they just keep coming up empty. For other people, it's about searching for purpose. Why am I here? What significant things can I accomplish? What gives me value? What am I supposed to be doing with my life? A lot of people are searching for that. What are you searching for? Well, whatever it is that you're searching for this morning, I invite you to look into this black hole. Because you've got to figure this out. <clears throat> because if you discover that the hole is empty, then you'll realize that it is full. You see, the Bible tells us that if Christ has not been raised, you are still in your sins. 
And if you go to that grave and you find the dead body of Jesus there, if they had found it, or if we could find it. He says, and we're still in our sins. We're still going to have to walk around with the guilt and shame of the things we've said and done our whole lives. And there's no losing that. But Paul's point is just the opposite. That if you find that that black hole is empty, then you'll realize that it's full. It's full of God's peace. Because it's full of forgiveness. Because it means that the work of Jesus has been accomplished and it's been satisfactory and it's done for you. And that you can enjoy in a world of trouble the peace of God. An empty tomb means that it's full of peace. And not just that. This isn't the first time we've been with Jesus to the grave. If you look at this picture, it's Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. He had been in there for several days. But Jesus called his name and called him out. It's right after Jesus had said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. You see, the thought is here that Jesus was demonstrating that he has power over death. It gives us reason for hope because someday Jesus is going to call you out because an empty grave reminds us that it's full of God's power. When you find that it's empty, then you realize that it's full, full of Jesus' power over death, that he has won the victory. And then one last reason today to come to the tomb. We just read the passage a little bit ago. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. Here's the thought. Not only has Jesus been raised, but all of his people, all believers, you and me, have been raised as well. He says, now set your hearts on things above. He says, don't get too bogged down with the things of this earth. It's quickly passing away. We're not even going to be here that long. So set your hearts on things above. Set your mind. Set your focus. Set your purpose on the things that God has called you to do. That you've been called to greater things than just the trivialities of this earthly life, that you've been called to serve your king, that you're being called by your Lord, that you're called not just to live there forever, but you're called to live there with him now, to live with him through faith. So set your hearts on things above. Raise your sights. An empty grave is full, full of God's purpose for you in this life. So you've got today, you've got to come to the tomb. You've got to get there. You've got to look inside. And you've got to find out if in fact it's empty. The women found that it was empty. The disciples found that it was empty. But today you have to find that it's empty too. That it's been emptied for you and it's empty because it's full. It's full of God's Forgiveness. It's full of God's power. It's full of God's purpose for your life. So rejoice today in the risen Savior. Over the last few weeks, we've been focusing on different hymns. In just a minute, we're going to sing, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, maybe the, the most familiar, famous hymn of all the Easter hymns. Written by a man named Samuel Medley, who was English, he was in the Navy. But today I'd like to talk to you not about the actual author of the hymn, but the inspiration for that hymn. So you know where it came from. It came from a man named Job. And the thing we remember about Job is he had a lot of losses in his life. He lost a lot of things. 
He lost all his possessions. He had so many possessions and then he lost them all. In those first couple chapters, he had people come and rob him of his animals. Apparently there was maybe like a lightning strike that said, fire from God. He took more of his possessions away. Just an amazing loss. And he lost some key people in his life too. He lost his children. Remember that part? Where his house collapses and all his children are inside and they're all gone. He lost important people. And he lost some personal things too. He heard those stern words from his wife. He, he was arguing for chapters with his friends. And then to top it all off, he got sick. He had a lot of loss. You, you, couldn't, amaze, you couldn't imagine losing all those things that quickly and how you would respond. You, you would assume that at that point, he'd be empty. But he wasn't. He was full. And here's what he said. I know that my Redeemer lives. <clears throat> and on the last day I'll stand upon the earth. With these eyes I will see him. Pretty much everything else had been taken away. But God preserved him. And he wasn't empty. He was full. Because he knew that God was still there. He knew that God's power and God's promises and God's peace and God's purpose was still there. And today we do too. There are times when we go through empty places in life. It's true. Very many difficult things. So look today when you're feeling empty to the grave, to the dark hole, because it's empty too, because it's full. Amen.